السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب شحني صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل أقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا زدنا علما ربنا زدنا علما ربنا زدنا علما اللهم إن نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد جزاكم الله خيرا my dears for joining the class may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put lots of barakah in your lives and in your knowledge and in your families ameen ya rabbal alameen and jazakum Allah khairan again for your duas you know I felt so uplifted and I felt embarrassed as well because I was I was not expecting admins to post um, request for duas and then I just saw flood of messages of duas and uh, subhanallah I felt better because that day I was really unwell uh, alhamdulillah it was just flu but it was severe flu so alhamdulillah alhamdulillah a lot better may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love you all for whose sake you love me and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the best of everything in this world and in the hereafter alhamdulillah um, now can you give me a recap of what we have been doing who can give me a recap of what we've been doing where are we in the story of Yusuf alayhi salam? Okay, I'm waiting for people. Where where have we reached in the story of Yusuf alayhi salam? Subhanallah. Uh, my apologies. Can you all hear me now? Okay, alhamdulillah. So the oldest brother, uh, he uh, decided that he's not going to, he's, he put himself in self-exile. Okay. Alhamdulillah. So now we're going to start, um, before we start a lesson, we're just going to renew our intentions that we all are gathered here for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, gives us, um, you know, the honor to see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day uh, of judgment. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with all of us. Then, so that we are gathered here, so that we can increase ourselves in knowledge, so that we become better worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then lastly, that once we've removed our own ignorance, we are going to spread the message of Islam to others. Okay? Alhamdulillah. Can you all hear me, my dears? Can you all hear me? Yes, alhamdulillah. Can the admins now close the chats, please? Because I can't do that. Okay, alhamdulillah. 
Alhamdulillah. So now, the scene so far is that the brothers, they, you know, they hold a meeting and this, the eldest one of them, he has like self-exiled himself. And he has put the condition on himself that until my father gives me permission, or if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides for me something, only then I'm going to move. And now you will see what is he going to say? What is what instructions he's giving to the other brothers? You see, in if I ask you, give me adjectives of um, the story, the, of, of emotions, a description of emotions that you have come across, you know, the characters, what emotions have they felt in this surah until now? Can you give me some adjectives, please? Jealousy, okay. What else? Patience, love, okay. Barakal love, you can envy, okay, fear. Hatred, lust, yes, barakallahu barakallahu You see, do do you think there is sadness as well over there in in the story? We have we come across it. The characters have felt sad. Yes. You see, Subhanallah, this story. You would see an entire spectrum of emotions, and. The, the verses that we are going to study today also are going to depict um, the, the grief that Yaqub is going to experience and his long-standing grief for Yusuf and his sadness and sorrow over Yusuf And we are going to then ask ourselves that uh, to what extent can we display this em these emotions, you know, particularly sadness? To what ex extent can we display? So today we will learn that's going to be our lesson objective, to learn how much should we be able to display? And does that, does it mean that someone who is going through an emotional state and you know they're feeling emotionally low does it mean that their spiritual state is low as well that's a question for us to now think and you're going to tell me the answer keep that question in mind and we're going to then conclude what is going to be our answer towards the end of the lesson inshallah so we're just going to do five ayahs they are very profound ayahs okay let's begin Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Now the elder brother is talking. Okay, he says, "Irji'u ila abikum, fakulu ya abana, inna bnaka saraqa, wa ma shahidna illa bima alimna, wa ma kunna lil ghaybi hafizin." He said, "Return to your father and say." O oh, our father, indeed your son has stolen, and we did not testify except to what we knew, and we were not witnesses of the unseen. Now, the statement is as if, you know, this ayah, it's as if that, you know, they have reached Palestine. Yeah, they've reached Philistine, and then now he's saying that when you go there, you know, tell your father, abikum, yeah? Your, you know, uh, say, oh, our father, your son has stolen. Okay, so this is one of the interpretations. Yeah, and you know that, Dad, we took an oath with you, and we bore witness with Allah based on what we know. And you know, tell tell him that we only knew we were going there to get the stuff, and we the intention was we we're going to return, and you know, we did this to the best of our knowledge. But we don't know the future. So they're trying, you know, he's trying to tell them that, look, you know, justify yourself that dad, you can't expect us to protect 
from the unseen. And another interpretation is, you know, that um, the brothers, they know that Benjamin is not a thief. But when they saw the cup come out of his bag and they saw that he doesn't protest. And th that's one point. And the other thing is that, you know, they themselves presented um, this the solution to you know if someone if if they were if the people were the security people were to find the cup what is going to be the punishment so they themselves so they were they were they didn't know the future and hence you know based on the teachings of their father um, they suggested that if you know if one of us is a thief then he should be enslaved for the year so they're trying to justify to their dad He's trying to give them justifications. And when you reach, tell dad that, you know, it's, oh, my father, you taught us that. So we only gave the information based on our teachings. And we didn't know what was going to happen. And the other factors that make the, the, the situation complicated is that their father... And they, he, you know, he also knows that once upon a time they lied. And, you know, Yaqub alayhi salam, they know Yaqub alayhi salam knows Binyamin is not a thief. So, you know, how can he accept the fact that they are saying he stole? So you see, this part of the story is very, very emotional. And... You know, all of us who are parents, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us um, from ever going through this. Yeah, Allah, for loss of a child, you know, you know, is is very, very difficult on a parent. May Allah protect all the mothers from this, all the parents from this. Um, so you now imagine Yaqub alayhi salam situation. But you know, we now know that these brothers are not lying. And, you know, we can understand, and, and I think we can empathize with them that, you know, they're trying their best and they're honest and they are trying very hard to explain to their father. But if you remember, what did they say? They said, Dad, we are going to protect Binyamin for you. But now what are they saying? We can't protect over the unseen. And if you remember, Yaqub had already mentioned that if circumstances go beyond your control, then there's no blame on you. You see, in, in the first instance, when it was Yusuf alayhi salam, um, how did they break the news then? And now how, they, how are they speaking? You can tell that they're not lying. Yeah. How? Let's look at that. Next ayah. Was alil qariyat alati kunna fiha wal ayir alati akbalna fiha wa inna la sadiqum. And ask the city in which we were and the caravan in which we came. And indeed, we were the truthful. So now they're also now trying to justify. And you know, you know, make the dad understand that they're not lying. That dad, we know you won't believe us. So why don't you ask people of the town, meaning the people of Egypt, meaning ask the people who were in the same caravan with us, that we're not lying. If you remember the first time when it was with Yusuf alayhi salam, what did they say? He, they, they said, oh, our father, indeed we went and we had a race and left Yusuf with our belongings. Um, and then the wolf ate him. And they said, you know, we, we know you, you're you not going to believe us, even though we're telling the truth. And then, you know, they brought a shirt full of blood. Now, see the difference in their words now. And that will help you, uh, you know, recognize when someone might be lying and when someone's actually telling the truth, even though it seems that they are lying. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, you know, what is what was said in each situation. Okay, can you tell me now that that's a question for all of you. Can you tell me the difference in words uh, in, in situation one when they, um, you know, came to tell the news about Yusuf being lost and now about Benjamin? How can you tell us, can, can you tell me the difference? I'm waiting for answers. Mm -hmm. They were scared to tell their dad. <clears throat> they used his words to justify the crime they committed in the first time. The wording is different. Okay, he mentioned he's truthful. No, they didn't bring any false witness. Okay, good. Okay. Jazakumullah khairan. Look at this um, ayah that I'm sharing with you. Ayah number 82. Yeah. What are they saying? Dad, we've told you what happened. And now we're asking you, if you want, you can investigate. Yeah. Ask the people of the caravan, the people who accompanied us to Egypt, ask them. So they are inviting Dad to do his own investigation. And in... Another point is that, you know, in situation of Yusuf salam, they contradicted themselves. You know, they told dad, you know, let Yusuf salam, Yusuf come with us. He's going to play with us. Yeah. And what happened? You know, he, they said, and when they came back, they said that we were the ones playing games and he was looking after her our belongings. So you see, they were contradicting themselves in speech. Yeah. So, you know, even Yaqub can understand that they are speaking the truth. So what does Yaqub then say? He says, Ayah number, just hold on, please. My apologies. Quale, bel so well, it's lacum and fusucum and raw. For so from Jamil, I saw law and yet. Yaqub said, Rather, your souls have enticed you to do something, so patience is most fitting. Perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring them all, bring them to me all together. Indeed, it is He who is the knowing, the wise. Subhanallah. So, what is Yaqub saying? That you know, you have made sawalat taswil. Sawalat comes from the word taswil to make something seem fair-minded, yeah. So that you know, to to justify something, you're making it seem as if it's all correct. And if you look at this ayah, it seems that you know. Yaqub is saying that I don't believe what you're saying. Yeah. And you know, in in a in a situation where common situation, like people, general people, what's what would their reaction be? You know, you know Yusuf is gone. Now his second son is gone. The third one, you know, they've told that he's not coming back. So three sons gone. Imagine the trauma that parent will be experiencing. 
you know, you would think that this father is going to just snap. But what is he saying? His words depict the strength and control over his emotions. He goes on to say, that, you know, I hope, Asa means hope. I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not only bring Binyamin back or the oldest one, perhaps will bring all of them, including Yusuf. Look at this, subhanallah, in such a critical situation. You see, Yaqub salam is displaying hope and trust in Allah. He is ever more hopeful in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is he saying using the words, the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Halim al-Hakim. Al-Alim, all-knowing. Al-Hakim, all-wise. Meaning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows why this is happening. And, you know, even though it seems as a very bad calamity, yeah, and I can't seem to work out, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. And whatever is happening, is happening through the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here we see a perfect example of tawakkul. Yeah, he has, he's expressing his trust and reliance in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a very difficult time, you know, in, in a time where most of us, you know, would have lost it. And we would be shouting and screaming and crying and all that. And this is how, uh, but the Prophet of Ya'qub yeah, alayhi salam, Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is how is he displaying his emotion? And, you know, this is why we are asked to study the story of uh, Yusuf alayhi salam. Why? So that we learn the character of the prophets. <clears throat> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to have that composure when situation is not easy, that we are able to do, um, you know, to do a display of emotions that we don't regret. And we are, uh, you know, our reaction is, is such that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with us. And, you know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, allow us to say the words that are pleasing to him and withhold us from saying things that we are going to regret and make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upset. Ameen. So you see how it, yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not mention that he shouts at the boys and he, he is getting upset. No, he is very, very hopeful in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even in a very difficult time. You see, one more thing that we learn from Yaqub alayhi salam is that he did not allow the unfortunate circumstances in his life to deter him from remaining optimistic. Yeah? You know, he was, he did not become a pessimist. He was forever hopeful in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, you know, it's been, it's been more than 30 years, you see, that 25 to 30 years, we don't know the exact number, that Yusuf is, is gone missing. And yet he has, Yaqub has hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, a lesson from this ayah is, always have good thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the worst situation as well, have good thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then, the next ayah, ayah number 84. And he, and he turned away from them and said, Oh, my sorrow over Yusuf. And his eyes became white from grief. For he was of that a suppressor. You see, this ayah tells us how 
badly it had, you know, this whole situation had affected Yaqub alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and he turns away from them. So they have spoken what they've spoken and he replied what he replied. Now he turns away from them and he says, Ya Asafa. Asafa is, oh my intense grief. Yeah, he's been told Binyamin has been enslaved. And his response is that he's remembering Yusuf salam. It just shows us his true love and, and, and strong love for him. And, that, and the fact that this calamity reminds him of um, Yusuf alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَبْيَضَّتْ uh, His two eyes turned white, meaning he cried intensely. And turned white may have two meanings. Either he became blind or his eyesight, uh, you know, was, had become really, really weak. You know, his eyesight had become so diminished. And why did that happen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, minal husni, due to grief. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fahuwa kazim. Yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, even though he was feeling that bad, fahuwa kazim, kazim means he was holding it in and not showing it to anyone. He was not showing his emotions to anyone. Kadim is usually used for anger. You see, my dears, if you attended the Ramadan course, um, we learned um, the dua. And I'm going to share the dua with you all. The Nabi Sallallahu has sought protection again against Ham wal Hazm. And uh, here, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the words of Yaqub alayhi salam when he's saying, Ya Asafa, oh my grief, my intense grief. Now, Asaf is three emotions coming together over a prolonged period of time. And what are they? Number one, it's Huzn. Huzn meaning where you are you are grieving over something that has happened in the past okay so asaf includes husn it includes husn means grief something that has happened over the past um, uh, and number 2 it 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 is regret and it is worry all these three emotions, they come together over a, a prolonged period of time. And the word is used, asif. So what have we been told? That he's holding back his anger. He's holding back on his anger. And you know, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that there is no swallowing up which yields more rewards than swallowing up of anger for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I paraphrase, I paraphrase the meaning for you. And there's another hadith that when a person is full of anger, and then he needs to show it, express it in, in either behavior or speech. But that person holds up for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he will get more reward than holding back any emotion. You see, and we see the prophetic character in front of us, um, of Yaqub alayhi salam. These, each word holds a profound meaning. <laughs> You see, nowadays we hear that 
you know, men don't cry and, uh, you know, they don't show their emotions. But what are we being told here? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning that it is a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Yaqub alayhi salam. Yeah, not only that, he's displaying his emotions. Yeah, and we are being told that he also is losing his eyesight due to excessive crying. And, you know, we know Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has taught us that shedding tears is a display of mercy and affection granted to us by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And we see that, you know, Yaqub alayhi salam is going through grief because his son, his sons have been, you know, they've, they, they're gone. And you see, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa we all know that throughout his life, he experienced different types of losses. The loss of his dear wife, Khadija radiallahu alayhi And then all his children, except Fatima radiallahu alayhi they all passed away in his lifetime. Yeah, and then we all know the story of, uh, you know, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa son, Ibrahim. Uh, you know, while he was a baby and when he was breathing his last, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's eyes were filled with tears and he began to cry. So there was just tears flowing down the eyes. And one of the companions, you know, in that, in that Arab culture, it was, it, you know, men would not cry. So he was, you know, one of the companions, he was surprised. And he asked, O Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa you cry too. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa responded, it is mercy. And then he said that the eyes are shedding tears and the heart is grieved, but we will not say except what pleases our Lord. And then he sallallahu alayhi wa said, O Ibrahim, indeed, we are grieved by your departure. So what are we learning? We're learning that it is okay to shed tears. Yeah? And, and, and this is not a sign of um, low Iman. So coming back to the ayah here, that Yaqub alayhi salam is being praised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for not showing his grief. And then what does he say? Sabrun jameel. And we've come across this word before as well. This is a dua, my dears. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-hazani wal-ajizi wal-kasali wal-bukhli wal-jubani wa-ghalabati rijal This dua, if you have the time, I shared last year, last Ramadan, we did 30 du'as in 30 days. And I've given the explanation of this. If you have time, you can go back on the YouTube channel and uh, listen to the explanation. It's a beautiful du'a. Okay, and this is a du'a. It's a prophetic du'a that we, Prophet Sallallahu taught us to see protection from grief of the past and of um, the future. Okay, so let's come to Sabrun Jamil first. Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimullah, he says, Sabrun Jamil is patience without complaining. So you don't complain to anyone. What do we women do? You know, when we are going through intense grief or worry, or, you know, we're being tested in, in, in some sort, what do we do? We call our friend, we call, you know, someone we hold dear in our heart. Yeah. So, 
you know, we, we feel the need to complain to people. But if you don't do this, yeah, if you don't complain to people, that is sabrun jameel. Yeah. And you know, beautiful patience is when you are content with the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is a difference between complaining about Allah and complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, Yaqub alayhi salam is not complaining about Allah. Okay, so, you know, Ibn Taymiyyah says uh, you know, that Yaqub alayhi salam is not complaining about the situation, but he's complaining to, to, and he's not complaining to the people, but he's complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this does not negate Sabrun Jami. And on a side note, you see tears are mentioned here. And you can do your research as well. That the tears that come out of emotion, yeah, you know, uh, compared to, um, you know, you cutting onion, for example, it's an irritant. Um, the tears that come out as a result of an irritant are, are different in composition to the ones coming out of um, emotions. And crying is praiseworthy if it is out of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it, you know, it's one of the uh, cat seven categories of people who are going to be under the shade on the day when there is not going to be any shade. And we conclude that crying is ne not necessarily a sign of lack of iman. You see, we are being told that Yaqub cried so much that he lost his eyesight. You know, over the grief, uh, out of grief for Yusuf -Islam. But we are also being told that he never let that be seen by anyone. Then you know how amazing is it that you feel that grief that got your eyes physically, you know, you, 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 you got, got to your eyes physically and you've lost your eyesight. It makes you look different. Yet you don't share that with people. So you see, this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us in the Quran. He subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the worst case scenarios and then gives us the best case response. You know, we when we are going through a difficult time, we tell others, you know, you don't know what I'm going through. Yeah, I'm going through the a very difficult period in life. And you know, whatever situation, X, Y, Z. Can anyone compare that and say it is very similar to what Yaqub was going through? No. You know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for the people of Palestine. I think they are going through the same emotion. But for us, you know, we cannot compare. You see, here we learn from this ayah is we are seeing two extreme distant emotions. It is a worse type of calamity. And, you know, the feeling that, you know, the of grief 
And at the same time, how he's holding it back and not showing it to anyone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the strength of character. Like Yaqub alayhi So we learn one of the lessons is to cry and show human, to show emotion is human. Okay? So we're not going to say you're a man, you cry and this and that. No, nothing like that. We're being told that, you know, a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala went through a difficult time, but he held back it, and he complained to Allah, but subhanahu wa ta'ala, but did not complain about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's go on to the next ayah. Now, what did the brothers say? You know, although he's turned away from them, but what does he say? قالوا, they said, Tallahi تَفْتَأُ تَذْكُرُ يُوسُفَ حَتَّى تَكُونَ حَرَضًا أَوْ تَكُونَ مِنَ الْهَالِكِينَ They said, by Allah, you will not cease remembering Yusuf until you become fatally ill or become those of those who perish. So you see that they must have overheard. So they say, uh, responding to what Yaqub was saying, although Yaqub was speaking it privately, but they overheard, they overheard his complaint to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember we said, Tallahi, and the difference between Wallahi, Talla, meaning said in shock. Wallah, you say, when you want to emphasize. And Tafta'u, meaning to Continue on unrelently. Meaning, are you going to continue on making the mention of Yusuf? And they say, until one of the two things happen to you, either, you know, hatta takuna haradan, haradan, harad, meaning, uh, you know, you become fatally ill or you become near to dying. Yeah meaning you're grieving so much that you may die. Um, you know, you're grieving so much for Yusuf alayhi salam that it will, the grief will consume you and it will wither you away. Or, or, takuna min al-halikin, halak, halaka means destroyed. You're going to snap and you're going to explode. Why? Because they can see the effect. Although he's, Yaqub alayhi salam is not mentioning anything to anyone. But they can see the effect of grief on their father. And, you know, what are they saying to their father? They are concerned. And they're saying, you know, Dad, don't do this to yourself. Don't let this eat you away. But, you see, you will find an element of disrespect the way they're talking to their dad. Yeah, he was older than, he was an elderly person. He was a prophet of Allah. You know, they should have shown some respect. They had the element of care, but the word, the choice of words, you know, we should not, you know, be disrespectful to our parents. These are two lessons. I've written... And envy never achieves their goal. If you remember, and I'll ask this to you all, why did, you know, when they, um, they threw Yusuf salam in the well, what did they say? That once we've thrown Yusuf salam in the well, what's going to happen? Who remembers? Let me see. What did they, what, what was their purpose? Once Yusuf is out of the way, what's going to happen? Yes, Jazakallah khair, Sister Marian, Sister Sabrina, that Jazakallah khair, Sister Jalilat, yes, and Sister Umiyahya, that they wanted to get their father's attention, their father's love. Yes, Sister Ainana, and uh, wanted to, and were they, was they successful? And, you know, they threw Yusuf alayhi salam, no doubt, because of their envy. Were they successful? What do you think? Who is he remembering? 
you know, Binyamin is lost, but who is he remembering? So you see, it is a lesson for our life. And envy never achieves their goal. Sister Sam writes that Alni is that both Prophet Yaqub and the people of Palestine are both Palestinians. Yes, may Allah ease the suffering, my dears. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease their suffering. Okay, and um, another, another lesson is show compassion. Show compassion to your elders. My dears, please, if you have elderly parents, you know, Sometimes they will do things that will test your patience because the thing is we are patient with our young ones. You know, with babies, we understand that they are not able to comprehend. But believe me, it is a circle of life. The elderly become like the young ones. The thing is we have seen them so active in our lives that we are, it's difficult for us to, you know, uh, empathize that they, are, they have become dependent. So here, like the brothers, they are feeling for Yaqub salam. They're feeling his grief. But look at the choice of words they're using for Yaqub salam. They could have sent, said it in a better way. Okay, so a lesson for all of you, show compassion. Show compassion to your elders. Remember, my dears, kindness to parents is something that will be rewarded and you are going to be rewarded for it in dunya and in the hereafter. It's, you know, other Whatever good, other good that you do, you may or may not get the reward in this dunya. Yeah? But you are for sure going to be rewarded in, in, in dunya for the good you do to your parents. Okay? Alhamdulillah. So now, how does Yaqub alayhi salam respond? Can you all hear me? Yes, Jazakumullah khairan. Qala, innama ashku bathi wa huzni ila Allah wa a'lamu min Allahi ma la ta'lamun. He said, I only complain of my suffering and my grief to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I know from Allah that which you do not know. So, Yusuf, Yaqub, sorry, Yaqub alayhi salam is clarifying his, you know, what his sons are saying. He's saying, I'm not complaining about Yusuf. I'm actually talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about two matters. Yeah? Bathi, you know, I'm complaining to Allah about Bathi. Bathi means to spread, meaning my grief has spread to every corner of my body, even to my eyes. And then Wahusni, and now this new grief about Binyamin. And I'm complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not just lamenting about the situation. And then he says, And I know something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you don't know. Can anybody tell me what does he know? Let me see how many of you remember. What does he know that they don't know? Anyone? Let's see the clever people. What does he know? Yes, how do they know Yusuf al-Islam is alive? Their dream. Sister Sabrina, you won. Well done. Their dream. You know, he knows the dream. So it's given, and he's saying, you know, that dream has given me hope. I don't know where he is, you know. But the, the, the fact that he, I don't know if he's safe, he's kidnapped, that, that thought is giving me grief. But I'm hopeful in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that there is going to be a positive end to all of this. Yeah? Now, you see, we're going to talk about something very, very important. About depression in Islam. Yeah? 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these profound ayahs has used different words to explain the grief of Yaqub alayhi salam. Yeah, the words are asaf, huzn, kazim, haradan. Yeah, and it just gives us the emotional state he was going through. And, you know, and these words, they symbolize those emotions that happened, that he experienced over a long period of time. And then there's also a mention of tears. So my question to you is, can a believer be depressed? Or does it mean that a person is not a believer or his belief in Allah is weak? What do you think? You see, uh, there is an organization with the abbreviation of NICE. And NICE stands for National Institute of Care. Let me just tell you, I forgot myself. National Institute, a second, let me just hold on, I'll tell you. Just give me a moment, please. National Institute for Health and Care Excellence. They have given their guidelines, and I'd like you to know this, that clinical depression is a combination of one, of two courses uh, symptoms plus other symptoms over a period of more than two weeks. The first system is, symptom is persistent sadness or low mood every day. And the second symptom is that you lose pleasure in doing things you like to do. So you used to enjoy cooking, you used to enjoy talking to your friends. Suddenly you don't wanna do anything. You don't like doing that anymore. Along with minor symptoms like, you know, you, you're feeling tired, aches and pains, suicidal thoughts, you know, your appetite has changed, you, you started binge eating. All this comes under the definition of clinical depression. It is, like I mentioned to you, the, the guideline from NICE. You know, so what do we learn? It's, you know, it's to do with your psychology as well as your behavior uh, by yourself or with others, you know, social interaction. So when they ascertain a person is depressed, you know, they look into all this. So my question to you is, can a believer be depressed? And does Islam recognize the existence of depression? You see, this question, you know, does Islam recognize the existence of depression is, is not correct. Quran and the Sunnah don't give a list of illnesses, but we should ask, does Islam find the feelings associated with, with depression blameworthy? That's the question we should ask ourselves. Yeah. The people who are depressed, yeah, are ones who are chronically sad for more than two weeks and they don't like doing things they like. Now, let's see in the light of Yaqub who was a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, you know, we we read the word. He said, Innama ashku bathi. Bath meaning the grief over a period of time has spread and it surfaces 
until uh, so much so that it, it surfaces to the top. So if a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala felt like that, that means a believer can experience these feelings. But on top of that, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? He held back of expressing them. Meaning, feelings weren't blameworthy. Write that down. But expressing them in the wrong way is. Okay? So what do we now conclude? That Islam does recognize feelings associated with depression. So coming back to our question, can a believer be depressed? And there are, there are two answers to that. You know, we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Ala bidikrillahi tatuma innul kulub. Verily, in the remembrance of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do hearts find tranquility, peace. So now the question is that does depression ever justify doing something haram? And this is, I'm not talking medical question, I'm talking a religious question. Can depression justify that a, a depressed person doing haram? For example, you know, him, him, him or her having suicidal thoughts and entertaining them as well. You know, what are the haram thoughts that can come to them? You know, not praying. Can't be bothered to do wudu, not praying, or the thought that I'm going to jump off the window. You may not like it, my dears. You may not like it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heal all of us who are going through this and give us the, the, the wisdom to do what is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you see, the reality is there is no justification for doing haram. But at the same time, a person can experience grief over a period of time. I just told you about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and, you know, the loss of his son Ibrahim. So Islam does not censor the feelings a person has felt over a long period of time. But you see, we learn from the prophets what what did that the tongue does not say anything except what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, we see that the prophets went through a turmoil. But what did they say? I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to question the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, you know, where is where how can anyone justify talking, you know, about suicide then? So what do we conclude that? That, you know, we say a person can be depressed, but it should not lead them to do any haram. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken about people doing haram because the emotions got better of them. How do we know that? In Surah Al-Isra, Ayah number 36, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In the sam'a wal basara wal fu'ada kullu ula'ika kana anhu mas'ula. Indeed, the hearing, the sight, the heart, all will be accountable, responsible. And, you know, all of you, let me test your Arabic. What is the word for heart do you know? What is the word for heart do you know? Qalb. But here in this ayah, we're being told the word fu'ad and not qalb. Because fu'ad means emotionally charged heart. What are we being told? Even that, that heart just doesn't justify the haram we do. And another thing is, you know, some people think that if a person is depressed, their iman is low. And is that right now, my dear sisters? I would like you to tell me. Do you think that is correct? 
from the story of Yaqub alayhi salam? What have you com come to the conclusion? <clears throat> What's your conclusion? I'm waiting for your answers. No. Yes, correct. Yeah. You, we can't say Yaqub salam's iman was not low. Yeah. Similarly, my dears, you know, some people, uh, you know, uh, some people say, you know, someone who is affected by black magic, their iman is low. That's not true at all, at all. Why? Because we know from the seerah, the Prophet ﷺ was affected with black magic towards the end of his life. Now, so much so that Nabi ﷺ, you know, he thought that he'd done something, but he hadn't. It didn't affect him, you know, um, passing the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not affect his you know, him talking about the Quran, but certain things he would not remember if he had done or not done. Okay, so what do we conclude? Same thing with depression. Anyone who is going through the depression does not mean that they have low Iman. So next question is, does Islam have a role in helping people with depression? You know, normally the doctor, you know, they give you an antidepressants. And what, the, what that does is it enhances the serotonin. Uh, and, you know, if a person remains on it for a long time and when stopped, it relapses. And then, you know, they stop using it and then they, they keep on switching. You see, the solution is yes. So you can take the medicine, but there are other things as well. Depression is just not a clinical state, but rather other factors. You know, your social setting, who are you spending time with? You relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that can help you come out of depression. So yes, medication should be taken, but alongside with medication, you don't want to depend on medication forever, but you need to build on your social setting. People around you should be looking after you and you need to work on your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, so Islam is presenting many solutions on many levels. Yeah. And and us, if we see certain signs in people, we need to advise the person, um, you know, based on the knowledge of Quran and Sunnah. Yeah. For example, ask them, you know, ask them that and tell them that do you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests his slaves? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to test you. And tell them about Surah Baqarah, Ayah 155. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَنَبْلُوا وَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالْثَمَرَاتِ Yeah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that there's no doubt we are going to test you in many different aspects of your life. So that is, you know, a person going through whatever illness, a mental illness, or a, a physical illness. That's all the tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Mulk says, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاتَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ وَعَمَنَا yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us the purpose of our creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. Why? الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاتَ Allah created uh, the death and life in order to test us. Who's going to be doing the best actions? Yeah, Allah SWT is saying, we created to test you as to how you respond. Tests are a part of life. You see, all of us are going to be tested, my dears. In, you know, whatever, um, you know, test may be, it may be a physical one, it may be a uh, an illness, or it can be, 
you know, loss of life, loss of wealth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Taghabun, ما أصاب من مصيبة إلا بإذن الله. That, you know, when a calamity afflicts, afflicts you, each, of, each one of you is going to be tested. And ma'asqaba min musibatin illa bi iznillah means no calamity hits you except with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we're being told that we all are going to be tested. And each one of us has a specific test that is tailor-made to your personality and to your nature. And each one of us is going to be tested on what we can bear. And, you know, it may not be possible for another one to bear, but what is, you know, suited to our needs. Each one of us are different. And remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never test you in a manner that you can't handle. And we always need to be hopeful in, you know, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and never despair of his mercy. Because we know in Surah Al-Zumar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا تقنتوا من رحمة الله Never despair of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, you know, what else can you advise a depressed person? You tell them, and if you are going through and you're listening, you tell yourself that this world is only the beginning and not the end. You know, people think, you know, we live in a time of instant gratification. And people think that dunya is all that is. And there is no hereafter. If you truly believe in the hereafter, you know, then your heart will be consoled. Now imagine, you know, a person, they got into an accident. And as a result, they have, you know, lost their limbs. As a result, they lost their job. They're completely bedridden. Now, if this person believed in dunya alone, What's going to happen? You tell me. What's going to happen? They don't have any concept of the Akhirah. What is that person going to feel? What, what do you think can they... What's going to happen to them? Suicidal. Correct. Yeah. He's going to become depressed. Because he assumes that this is all I have. And now if I have nothing after this, that's it. That's the end of my life. You know, as opposed to someone who has Iman in the day, in the day of judgment, they believe in the Akhirah. Yeah. And they say that, you know, dunya is nothing compared to the Akhirah. There is a hereafter to come. You know, dunya is just a window to the next eternal life. This, this person is going to come out of depression. Okay? So, what do we learn? That Islam recognizes the feelings associated with depression. And a part of the solution is, yes, seeing your doctor, getting the medication. But the other part is from, you know, someone in the family, your friend, you know, caring person who is focusing on, up, uh, on uplifting your hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, 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 and teaches you and guides you to direct your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to believe in the life to come, to believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests, but also that the tests never go beyond your capabilities and also remember that you cannot be born with depression it is as a result of a trauma happened that in your life that is a, that 
can cause the depression. So my homework to all of you is, do you know anyone who is depressed? You're going to find out. And you're going to make a plan how you're going to help them. And remember that when you are going through depression, yeah, consider that it can save you from the fire of hell. And it can raise your ranks with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you behave in the righteous way. Okay. Okay, how to help a person who is depressed but not in the mindset to listen to your advice? Then ask someone else. If they don't want to listen to you, ask someone else. Just to, you know, each one of us, if you're going to speak with compassion, yeah, change the way you talk to them. Approach them differently. Okay. Alhamdulillah. I'm sorry I've taken a little, I've gone over your time, but it is. it was so important, the topic that we were doing, it was extremely important that we need to address it because mental health has become, you know, uh, it's become rampant. And, uh, you know, we need to direct. So we know now that we're going to seek medication, but we are also going to increase our self in knowledge and we are going to help people around us. Yes, it is an epidemic. And, and there's many, you know, people, we can talk on, uh, at hours length about this why and this and that. Uh, but let's now just stick to, uh, you know, the story of Yaqub Islam, that Islam validates it, but we need to, that, but this, this does not justify us doing haram. And also, that we people around them should be, you know, guiding them towards what does Islam say. I want to ask you how to help someone who is going through divorce. Again, you know, listen to the tafsir of Surah Talaq. Have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing you. And, you know, you know if there, there is going to be, um, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to provide for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to provide for that person inshallah always be hopeful in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes never go to a suffering person with a negative attitude no talk to them nicely yes uh, uh, they will never understand okay but talk to them all right let's now May, you know, all of us, I hope all the people in the class, you know, 452 of you online and 110 on YouTube, you know, let's all decide for ourselves that we are forever going to be hopeful in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will not entertain any haram thoughts coming to our minds. And, you know, we understand that we are being tested and, you know, we will all seek guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase in our du'as you know at times you won't feel like praying you will force yourself to pray and if you at times you won't feel like having the energy to do wudu you know you're going to try your best the best you can do yeah if you can stand and pray you will sit and pray if you can sit and pray you will lie down and pray but you will pray you will not let go of your salah okay all right. Jazakumullah khairan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heal the sick among us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, you know, uh, give us the strength of iman and, uh, and, and knowledge that we are able to live our lives in the way that the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have lived. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all your efforts, my dears, for joining the class and listening attentively and responding um, uh, with such beautiful answers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heal my dear sisters who are going through um, uh, depression at this moment in time as we speak. But understand that, yes, one side is medicine, but the other thing is 
that increase your uh, tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakumullah khairan. May Allah put lots of barakah in your lives, my dear. May Allah guide our children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease the suffering of the ummah. May Allah return the glory of Islam back. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the young children who are going through depression. Yeah. My dear, if your daughter is going through depression, your mother, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you a long life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely listen to the dua of the mother. You, you know, stand up in the middle of the night, make dua for her. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring her uh, back to good health, inshaAllah. Jazakumullah khairan, my dear. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka, astaghfiruka, astaghfiruka. Wa tubulik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.